Welcome back to Health Kindness on Northwest Digital News. Health and kindness focused on you. Jody Summers and Kevin Hunter here on the show, and we're going to talk about heading off headaches. A lot of people suffer from headaches, Jody. Let's talk about the the mm-hmm. types of headaches people are experiencing. Headaches are so common. I mean, it's one of the things that so many of my clients have, if that's not why they're seeing me, it's on their list of they experience them regularly. So there are as many people with different kinds of headaches as there are different kinds of headaches and reasons for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's there's not one answer for one thing, but even if we look at the types of headaches, there's tension, cluster headaches, migraine headaches, sinus headaches, there's headaches from environment, there's all sorts of different kinds of headaches. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the answers are true for all of them. And then some are very, very specific to, you know, getting rid of those headaches. Well, let's visit about some of the reasons. And I want to mm-hmm. start with dehydration. And part of the reason is that um, I guess I was maybe mildly aware of this before, but it wasn't until I was in the military that they put tons and tons of emphasis on making sure that you were drinking water, almost to the point you felt like a fish. But I can tell you that I pretty much never had a headache when I was in uniform. And I mean, that's pretty safe mm-hmm. to say, but they made us drink a lot of water. So dehydration, why is that such a big problem? Well, when you're dehydrated, you're, um, you can even see things that they, they plump down. That's not the word. They, they dehydrate. They get, mm-hmm. they get smaller. And so when you have um, a nice fluid brain and all of your... Um, different parts working well and and well hydrated and you just you don't feel the pain that dehydration can actually cause dehydration can cause pain in your lower back pain in your joints and the number one reason why people have headaches uh dehydration is the first thing i think of when somebody says they have a headache well you need to hydrate and hydrating unless you're already over hydrated will always be a benefit and never be um well, you know, there's no contraindication of having more hydration unless you're already overhydrated, mm-hmm. uh, which is rarely the case with people. Um, one of the things I think of often is when people go to like baseball games in the summer and they're outside or they're at the beach and they're, you know, in the sun all day. Oftentimes people at the end of the day, they'll have a, have a great day, but they come home with a headache. It is not because of the sun necessarily. It is because all of that together has caused dehydration. Um And so it is, if you have a headache, it's the number one thing to think about. Um, What did I do today or did I have enough to drink? And the general recommendation is half your body weight in water per ounces per day. So if somebody is, let's say 160 pounds, half of that is 80. So 80 ounces is eight or 10 eight ounce glasses. Um, And again, that's for an average day, but if you're in the sun, you would even want more than that. I want you to visit about this just real briefly because this is dehydration is actually one of the most important things off of the the reasons behind headaches. Um, Talk about this just briefly because so many people are spending when when you think about um, just to name a few of the uh, coffee shops, even in our own areas, we have uh, Dutch Brothers, Starbucks, um, Red Leaf Coffee. People are using so much caffeinated beverages in replacement of water and hydration that they think you know that I, I got x amount of fluids today because i you know had my 16 ounce over at starbucks and i had my 20 ounce over at red leaf in the afternoon and i stopped by dutch brothers and got my other whatever and then i'm at the I, i'm at the shop and drank a whole pot of coffee there um but one of the things they they, they didn't let us drink a lot of uh coffee in the in the military and did these forced hydrations uh, all the time um but talk about coffee because people have to understand how big of a problem it can be when they're overusing it and thinking that it's a water replacement. So although coffee has a lot of water in it, obviously, it's also a diuretic, which helps like remove fluid. Yeah, it's just it's so if we're replacing real hydration with coffee or with any kind of caffeinated beverage, especially some of the caffeinated beverages with sugar in them, um, it's it, there's not the benefit that you would get from drinking water. And if you're drinking too much coffee, actually too much caffeine can also lead to 
to headaches. Um, and in fact, people who try to come off coffee, who, you know, I'm going to cut off coffee, whatever they permanently or for a week or whatever, they will often have headaches because um, that caffeine, you know, the way it works in your body is it can cause headaches. It can cause people to not have headaches. And so it's not a replacement. It's just not a replacement. Now, nothing's wrong with having a cup of coffee in the morning as long as if it's organic, um, but it's by no means a replacement, especially if you have, um, if you find yourself have repeating headaches because you're dehydrated. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, there's too many, there's too many really good things that you can drink without being, you know, incre increasing your caffeine intake. All right. Uh, it was worth spending a little bit more time on dehydration there. There's a ton of other reasons oh. why you could be having uh, headaches too. Let's visit about some of those. Absolutely. Um, vitamin and mineral deficiencies are is another really, really common. Uh, and we'll talk about the specific nutrients there as we, as we progress here. Uh, food sensitivities, um, infections. So somebody who has a sinus infection, you know, cannot, can have a cold one day, a sinus infection. And then before you know it, they've got a terrible headache. Um, hormone imbalances, blood sugar imbalances, blood pressure imbalances. And of all of the ones on the list, um, people who have headaches from high blood pressure, that is a, a real red flag. And I, I do want to always say if there's anything, you know, I always want to be very cautious. Uh, if you're having a headache from high blood pressure, that is a reason to go see your doctor immediately. Call them on the phone and saying, you know, my blood pressure is really high and I'm having a headache because that is a risk factor for stroke. Some of this other stuff is, is, you know, literally just you need more hydration or you need to cut out foods that cause this pain. Uh, may not be a life-threatening situation where headaches from blood pressure really can be. Um, environmental issues from smoke, chemicals, mold, um, aspartame, which is uh, a sugar substitute, can cause horrible headaches in people. So let me, all let me, of those let me stop you there for just one second because you're talking about environmental mm -hmm. and I want to give people a little tip. This actually comes from years and years of being around uh, construction and recognizing where mold and black mold in particular uh, can grow inside of your home. So once a season, you need to mix up some apple cider vinegar and some water or just regular vinegar in water and spritz the underside of your toilet tank. Yep. And then, you know, after it's been spritzed, well, then actually put your nose under there and take a look and make sure, wipe it all down, make sure it's all completely clean. But almost 100% guarantee. Uh, if I was walking in front of anybody's house and they said, Kevin, show me where there's black mold, I said, I guarantee you I'll find some, hand me 20 bucks, I'll go and find in, in the house and find your black mold. And I would look right underneath the, mm -hmm. right there, perfect picture. The underside of the toilet tank will look like this. So make sure you get that black mold gone from underneath your toilet tanks. It happens because of condensation and stuff, but uh, a guaranteed spot to find mold in your house. It, it is, and, and mold is a huge issue for people, especially if they're really sensitive. You can, you can literally have to move out of your home for some people um, because it, you know, especially with some of the flooding that we've seen um, just recently, even in Nebraska or other parts of the country, um, you know, those are big issues for people. And you'll see a lot of other allergies and even headaches happen after uh, there's been mold issues. So yes, keeping the mold down, and that's a fabulous tip, a good place to start. And while you've got that water, you know, around the shower heads and underneath the kitchen sink are all places to double check to make sure there's no mold or mildew growing. With as much time as people role. are spending on computers and use of technology and gaming and TV and everything else uh, these days, what about eye strain and stress re related from that? And again, all of those things, you know, we're going to talk about leaving those situations. So that would be a perfect thing. You know, um, I think we talked about this earlier last summer, I was in a car accident and had a concussion and I didn't have much to do. But one of the things on my list, he said, no computer, no, t no screen time. It's so bad for your eyes. I'm like, that was like a doctor's telling me you cannot be on the computer um, because it's so bad and so hard. Uh, you know, will give you, it'll give you a headache to be on there. It's very, very stressful. Uh, it's stressful for your eyes. It's stressful for your head. Um, physical issues, seeing a chiropractor when you're not completely, you know, people can have neck issues. Sometimes that's causing um, headaches. And the last reason that we see that people get headaches, and this is a huge one. I see a lot of this and have a lot of success, actually, 
is gallbladder and liver sluggishness. And at the end here, I'm gonna give um, a really quick way to maybe potentially help support the gallbladder and liver. There's a lot of different ways to address uh, some of these reasons why you could be having headaches. Let's uh, visit about some of them. And maybe we, we, we've talked about hydration. So I think we've made that clear that people yep. need to be making sure that they're yep. hydrating and drinking enough water. Real quickly, um, tell us how much water a person should have per day. Yep. Half your body weight in <clears throat> ounces per day. Again, so if you're 160 pounds, that's 80 ounces. And that is on a regular day. That's not on a day that you're out at the baseball game or you're out watching your kids play soccer or you're in the sun or you're, you know, you're outside and sweating or running or exercising. That's just your average everyday day. Um, and that's just for the normal person without any health issues is half your body weight in ounces per day. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So if the kids are even spending time out in the yard, playing out in the yard, uh, get some water out there with a straw and it remind them to be uh, drinking water on a regular basis because their crabbiness could be coming from headaches from dehydration too. Absolutely. And sometimes even little babies can get headaches, you know, if they cry real hard and it hurts them. So, you know, more hydration, the better. Um, so the, another thing that when you think one of the reasons that hydration is because it's very constricting. Uh, another thing that is very causes constriction and is actually the second most common nutrient deficiency in the United States is magnesium deficiency. So um, calcium and magnesium are opposing um, nutrients. So calcium contracts and magnesium releases. And one of the things that's almost always safe for people to do when they have a headache, unless you have an underlying health issue that you cannot increase your magnesium, which is not real common, but there's a few, um, is increase your magnesium. So you can get magnesium supplementation and you can get a product called Calm, which is just a powder. And you put it in tea and drink it before you go to bed. Um, you can get magnesium spray and oil on your body. You can take magnesium baths. There's all sorts of ways to increase your magnesium. Magnesium releases. So if you think of um, you're, you've got so much tension, you want to increase something that's going to release that tension. Um, so not only is eating magnesium rich foods, which we talk about a lot here, so a lot like spinach and greens and leafies and all of those are rich in magnesium in addition to lots of other things. Um, what we find is that when you increase your magnesium and you're getting the what is considered normal or more, you have less stress type responses. So again, the make the headache in your head, the, the pressure in your back, cramping in your legs, all of those things are tension. All of them are related to magnesium deficiencies. What about B vitamins? Again, people are, can be very deficient in B vitamins. Um, and so uh, supplementing sometimes with B12, B6, all of those can really help with, uh, you, just, you just need to look at the whole nutrient lineup when you have ongoing headaches. You know, we all are gonna have a headache once or twice a year. We got dehydrated, whatever, we spent too much time in the sun and you know our eyes are stressed. But if you're having headaches on a regular basis, it is worth to look at your nutritional, um, you know, what you're getting in your diet and seeing if some of these, you know, manipulating with some of the, you know, supplements might be helpful, you know, try it for two weeks and see if, if adding magnesium and B vitamins help with the stress headaches. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, blood pressure and blood pressure related issues can be connected to headaches. What are some of the strategies for blood pressure? So blood pressure, again, can be very dangerous, um, you know, if it's really too high, but you want to make sure you're walking for blood pressure. Uh, one of the things that I really love to do for people with high blood pressure is to juice celery and to put some uh, beets in there um, and to increase the magnesium. It, why is it always going back to magnesium increases? Mm -hmm. Because magnesium releases and blood pressure, again, is a constriction of those vessels. So you want to make sure you're hydrated and they're not tight and that they're loose. Magnesium can help with blood pressure as well as with headaches. So, um, you know, juicing celery, juicing cabbage, juicing beets, uh, increasing your magnesium, walking. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do for healthy blood pressure, uh, including, you know, including food. Food is a huge one. Stress is a huge one. Again, all tied to constriction and headaches. You'd mentioned um, both the gallbladder and liver and how they can be uh, connected and how there's some um, hormonal issues that 
pertain to issues in the gut? It's all related. You know, when, when sometimes we'll go to the doctor and we go, oh, you have this problem, I'm going to give you this pill. Well, let's look at the whole picture. So your, your gut is related to how your liver um, filters and doesn't necessarily feel how it changes the toxins so it's easily to get rid of. If that's not working well and you have a lot of toxicity buildup um, because you're not your your detoxification pathways are not working correctly, which are your liver, your gallbladder, and your pain, you know, lots of different things are tied to those detox pathways. If we can support those in using a good beet supplement, a liver supplement, magnesium, and then lots of hydration and sodium, there's a balance there. Oftentimes people can, when they feel those headaches coming on, um, in fact, if anybody wants to reach out to me, I can uh, send the protocol for that um, if you want to give that a try with the different ways that you take these different things you know let me know I obviously want to talk to you in person um, but there are ways that you can take specific supplements when you feel a headache coming on that include a liver supplement a, a liver support a gallbladder support a magnesium support water and uh, a sodium and you take them in certain uh, a certain pattern and then if you if you feel it decreasing then you stop if you if it hasn't decreased you do it a second time and very very many people have extremely success with that finding that that their headaches are not nearly as bad and again it's getting your body working correctly um, and supporting all of those detox pathways i want you to talk a little bit about essential oils a lot of us have friends, family, other around us who, who can be salespeople for these kinds of products. But many of them, aside from what their company shares with them, don't really know that much about the product. You have actually spent hundreds of hours of <laughs> research and time on this subject. Talk about essential oils and ways in which they could be helpful. Um, so yes, I have. I actually, yeah, I just completed a, a, a non-branded course just about the science of, of uh, essential oils. And some of the essential oils that I keep in my medicine cabinet specific to headaches. In fact, um, I actually have one in my purse here and I'll just put this up here. You can see that. Uh, I put it in, it's got, it's got a turmeric base uh, and then it's got a carrier oil, of course. But in here is peppermint, lavender, spearmint, and orange. Um, all of those things, especially the peppermint. Now, if people have high blood pressure, peppermint is contraindicated for those with high blood pressure. So you want to do a maybe the spearmint um, and the lavender, but both of those are very good for relaxing and bringing down inflammation. And one of the reasons that I put it in a, a liquid, tube, there's liquid turmeric in here as well, is again, it's very anti-inflammatory and, and headaches are, are just inflammation of, of the areas around the brain. Uh, mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure that you're eating an anti-inflammatory diet as well. Uh, but those are all really good essential oils to have. And you wanna make sure you're looking for a really high quality essential oil. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting thing is uh, several years ago, uh, you may recall that I had a daughter in the hospital that I, I used essential oils for and helped her uh, re recover from the injuries that she had. Mm -hmm. But one of the practitioners that I ran into had mentioned to me how rapidly the oils get into the system when applied on the bottom of the feet. And in that particular uh, case, um, her being hospitalized and not really having um, you know, other better ideas of how to administer oils. Most of that oil that I used for her, and she was a little infant at the time, most of the oils I used for her were actually applied to the bottom of the feet. Curious uh, it, what, what you learned about that. Absolutely a safe place to put those oils. Um, and it, it just it really depends on where you put them and what types of oils they are and what the carrier is, but it's a very safe place. It does get into the skin, just like anything we put on the skin. Um, it, the, those molecules of the oils are very, very small and can penetrate. It's a really safe place to put uh, oils on children specifically. Um, even on the back, one of the things I do for my granddaughter who's living with me at the moment is she has her little box of children's safe oils. Not all oils are safe for children. Correct. Um, and I've made up the little, the little oils and she gets her box out before her bath and she's hilarious. She goes, you know, she's one and she's thinking she's putting it on because I put it after her bath behind her neck. 
Uh, mm -hmm. and then on her feet and she rubs it in her feet because you don't want it on their on their fingers uh, mm -hmm. to rub in their eyes but yes behind their neck on their feet some places that it's you know pretty safe for them to do uh, but yeah it there there's a whole science behind essential oils and certainly can be helpful for headaches i'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity to visit about one of your favorite subjects even on some of the sleep segments we've done and that is the epsom salt bath why is this a, a, a very nice remedy, not just for relaxing, going to bed, but also helping to get rid of a headache? Again, so hot baths and magnesium both relax the system. And if you think of headaches, even though not all headaches are tension headaches, mm -hmm. there is some tension behind all headaches, even if it's a even if it's a headache due to an infection. So let's just say somebody had a cold and they got a sinus infection, now they have headache. There's still inflammation there and there's still tension in the area. So a hot bath with magnesium both reduce the tension in your body, but the magnesium soaking through the skin actually also, like I said, calcium contracts and magnesium releases. So magnesium baths are good for your whole body, but can also help with headaches. And another thing, um, there is a, you know, there's lots of, this is just one brand, but there's uh, products on the market that are actually magnesium sprays. Um, so people who have lower back pain from dehydration, oftentimes I'll say, you know, spray some of that on their lower back. The other thing that you can do, and because you wouldn't want to spray it up by your face, but you can actually put some on your finger and then put this magnesium on the back of your neck and on your temples, along with a little bit of that essential oil. And that does also help reduce uh, the tension that's in that, that you're feeling from the headache. Mm -hmm. So could you mix a magnesium product with your essential oils if you're using it for a massage? Absolutely. So you, what you could do is get, you know, just purchase some of these clear. I, actually, what you really shouldn't purchase is clear. You should purchase um, the colored ones, the darker colored ones, mm -hmm. because it, I just like this because it came with the little rocks. Well, it's a whole different story. But you could <laughs> easily put in magnesium oil and then put in um, essential oils for you know the same ones we talked about and then use it at night on your temples and in the back of your neck where it is make a magnesium base a magnesium oil base which it's kind of a it's a little bit greasy so just just know what you're getting into but if they're really inexpensive and you could use that as your carrier oil or your carrier product uh, again really um simple easy way to support the body's uh, way to, to reduce that, that stress in your head. Well, fantastic stuff. Uh, everybody learned how uh, to deal with better their headaches. And uh, you mm -hmm. can reach Jody if you have additional questions, healthkindness.com. Uh, visit her website there and all her contact information is there. Thanks, Jody, for sharing mm -hmm. all this great information here on health kindness. Jody Summers and Kevin Hunter here on Northwest Digital News. Thanks, everyone. Until next time, take care. This concludes today's live programming on Northwest Digital News. Thanks for joining us for this special broadcast. Heard around the world in more than 70 countries on YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, Facebook, and Twitch TV. If you enjoyed a story or guest we had here on Northwest Digital News and would like to strut your stuff on the broadcast, email us today at wainfo2017 at gmail.com or call or text 360-545-3501. We're always interested in unique stories, topics, and guests to share with our worldwide audience. Before you go, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and comment on the live stream. And for those of you who'd like to financially support the broadcast, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Northwest Digital News. We thank you for your patronage. On behalf of Chris Bornstead, Kyle Torgerson, Stephanie Hunter, and all the people that made this broadcast possible, I'm Kevin Hunter. Till next time, take care.